Hi, this is John from DSM Graveyard. I'm going to show you guys how to time a uh, 4G63 engine here today. A uh, little tutorial how we do it, uh, which is one of the easier, uh, more reliable ways, I think. it's. I mean, we didn't reinvent the wheel here, but uh, if you want to bring in, I'm going to show you. Step one is to make sure our dowel pins right here are both facing up, and we have both of our timing marks uh, here uh, facing each other. Okay, and that way we're starting up top, so we can time the two cam gears in together, and then we can start working our way down here. So let's say we got our zip ties here, which uh, is a very easy, simple way for the do-it-yourselfer to get these to stay so they don't fall off. What we're going to do next is we're going to wrap it around the idle pulley, and this is the tensioner pulley. But the way to do this right, we find, is to do the uh, idle pulley first. That way we're not messing with the tension here, because that's where we're going to want all of our slack at the very end of the process is between the crankshaft and the exhaust cam. So we're going to walk this sucker around. Now if you've done a balance shaft eliminator, this cam gear, or this uh, the oil pump gear basically, it really necessarily doesn't have to be timed into this because we don't have a balance shaft here and here anymore. But just for, for fun we're going to do that. So the first thing we do is we wrap that around and we get it tight. and. Uh, the next process we're going to do is we're going to time, so we got this all tight here, and we're going to march it over to the crankshaft, which uh, I'm going to need a half inch. You got a half inch there, bud. All right, thank you. Should have had this a little bit ready. We're going to have that, and uh, you want to watch real closely. What I always like to do is have this nice, nice and tight, and we will slowly walk that over, and that's all it took. So now I'm going to hold here, walk this sucker around, and throw it around the tensioner pulley. Um, then the next thing we're going to do is pretty much tighten that. But I'm going to let it go here for just a second to explain a little bit more. Uh, common mistakes that most people do here is they'll have these gears upside down with the dowel pins maybe facing down or one up. Uh, the dowel pins must always face up. Problem number two some people do is they won't use a brand new tensioner and they don't use this really nifty tensioning tool when they're doing this. Now, this tool, if you want to take a closer look, it goes right through this mount here, and it puts pressure on the swing arm. Now, when we tighten this, we technically don't even need the grenade pin. I have it there for just in case. But you can see there's no tension here on the grenade pin. Um, so I'm going to set that over there. Now, number three, a lot of people I've been finding have problems is with the... Uh, balance shaft gear and this timing plate. This timing plate is what you're going to use to make sure your crank is correct to your cams. So what you'll want to see is we have this keyway gear that's going to obviously face out like this and you'll notice on the top there's a little bit of a bevel to it. Now we have this plate it also has a dish to follow that bevel. Now if we put these on the correct way it's going to be nice and perfect and flat. Now if you put this plate on the wrong way, you're going to notice a little bit of a gap there. This edge will now chew up your timing belt. The other problem you're going to have, well, you probably won't get it to run if you had this backwards. Because you'll notice here when we have it on, this mark here that's painted white is actually going to go to your oil pump timing mark. Now if I had it backwards, can you see that? It's going to actually make it where your crankshaft is going to be off about, uh, you know, from a 5 o'clock to maybe a seven o'clock. So if this plate is on backwards, your engine won't run right. Now lastly, we got our timing belt on. We've got this thing tight here. Okay, so now we're tight here. You're gonna use the special timing tool that's got two little uh, nubs in it to tighten this pulley. I don't have one mine right here in front of me, so uh, I can't really do this correctly <laughs> on this video. But uh, we'll show you what it's supposed to spin like here when we're done. All right, now that um, we've got our tensioner pulley adjusted and tightened down, I want to show you kind of what this is going to, what you should see when you're doing this. But first, I'm going to uh, lubricate my cams. So, uh, yeah, I have not a lot of metal to metal action here. And you can just see I'm just throwing some of this on. And that way, it'll kind of keep everything a little bit wearing down on us here. 
think I gotta get these rollers a little bit more. Okay. And this way we can really see if we have anything binding in our valve train. Oh, why we're doing that. If we turn it, we should see I'm not really stressing out to do this. It shouldn't be hard. Nothing is technically binding. My crankshaft's spinning awesome. My cams are spinning awesome. Nothing's really making any noise. Now, if you don't have the spark plugs in, uh, it'll turn like, like this. We don't have plugs in it right now because we don't want to be fighting the compression here. But um, if you want, we can look over here and we can see kind of what our cams should be looking like. And this way we can know that none of our uh, lifters have any spacing between them. You can always grab them and do a quick last minute check to make sure none of them are loose. Now once you get oil pressure on these, all your lifters will inflate and uh, your ticking necessarily will be going away. But uh, yeah, this just shows you how easy these motors should be turning over. You should be able to do this with a short um, half inch ratchet with not a lot of problems. So this has got uh, 272 cams, so it's going to be a little bit uh, harder than a regular OE uh, build, but other than that, oh, uh, I think to finish, to make sure everything's right after you've spun it, you're going to lock your two cams coming perfectly together, and then you check your crank. We're spot on right here. After turning this thing over about, you know, 15, 20 times, I feel confident that this engine's not going to have any problems. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll have a couple more videos coming up this winter.